Hi, I'm Nate, and this is Photo Learningism. Somebody asked me if it was possible to do the Star Trek beam effect in Caden Live. It's a good question. Let's see if you can. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learnings, and thank you for spending some time with me. We've been doing a mini series on doing visual effects. I've been working through the transitions in my opener as one part of this, but also there's some things we're throwing in along the way just for fun to keep this uh, spicy and interesting as we go. So let's dip into this idea of how to do the the beam effect, which if you've seen the latest Star Trek movies, uh, it kind of does these like these spinning bar things around a person and then they kind of gradually disappear. So I'm only going to try to tackle the uh, the, the rotating bits part because uh, that's interesting enough as it is. And to do that, you could use the principle that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to tell you this is a little cartoony because, again, I'm playing with proof of concept and an idea. And what I did here is I actually did some work in Krita. Now, if you're not familiar with Krita, or specifically the animation piece, which is what I'm about to do, Go check out that video in the card and see what that's all about to get an idea of how this fits together. Take a look here. So using this principle, and you could do this really in Blender if Blender's your jam. Um, same idea where you're just kind of animating things around an object. I took my head and I'm doing this in kind of a traditional 2D animation approach. Um, some of the colors that you're seeing there are what's called onion skinning. That give me some reference as I draw it out. I did three simple frames. You could certainly do more and you could do them with greater attention to detail than what I've done. This is purely a concept of make the lines spin around my head in this case. All right. <clears throat> now, something I learned by doing this is that it's actually better to do the blur in post because ultimately you have to isolate this as an alpha and bring it in and take away the background, chroma that out, and it's much easier to do if things are solid. So learn from that experience and don't blur it at this level, whether in Blender or if you're going to do it in Krita like I did. Um, if you're curious to kind of see that, I can go go watch that video. Um, but essentially, we, we put our frames in, animating on top of some reference frames, and it shows you how to do that in another video. And then we take it away when we're done, and then we have to send that out. We're using File and Render Animation. And I've talked a bit about FFmpeg. There's another video I'll throw a card up for that so you can get a sense of how that fits together. But essentially, this is another open source utility that Krita, in this case, relies on to export uh, the frames as a video. So I'm going to go ahead and point to where I parked this. And what you have to do is point it all the way into wherever you've downloaded this. And by the way, Krita does come with its own version, but you can get a later version like I've done um, into the bin and then just FFmpeg. EXE. So now that we have that, I'm going to do it as an MP4. That's good with me. You give it a name and then you click OK um, and that's going to dump to that location. If you're curious to kind of see that go through, I'm going to do that now just for your benefit, just to show you that it works. Um, that's going to export out and that has completed. OK, so that actually, yeah, that brought it out right here, the test four and you can see that the clip is there. It's very short, so we're not going to get a good look at it until we kind of go back into a video editor. In this case, I'm going to bring it over into Caden Live. All right, so that's kind of the first piece is we're making the effect. And again, this is a little bit cartoony. Uh, it could be much tighter. It could be much simpler. Um, you could get better results uh, actually using a digital pen. And if you're kind of curious to to try out digital pens. I did a special video dedicated to that, um, and I'll put a card up for that as well uh, in one of these corners. My finger can point in the right way. Uh, so you can get uh, an idea of one example. It doesn't have to be this one, but this is the one that I demoed and, and, and put on display. And also, by the way, I have it up there in case you're looking to throw away to support the channel. Um, if you happen to be interested in this one and it suits your needs, um, consider buying it through the affiliate link, and that, uh, that helps me out a little bit. So thank you so much for considering that. All right, but beyond that, let's hop over into Caden Live. Now let's look at this. So what I've done here is we have to start by bringing the clip in. That's this piece over here, and we have to get rid of the background. So that's a that's 
a simple chroma effect. Um, we've talked that through many times, so I won't do that again. You're making the, a certain color transparent, and that is done. All right. Um, some other things that I've done is I've tried to add some intensity and tried to make it a little bit more, and some of that had to do with the fact that it, I mentioned it was blurry, um, and it gave me some trouble when I was cleaning that up. So when that's done, what you'd want to do is actually, if you're doing it the way I'm doing it right here, is bring over the zone and bring it just to that space, and then you want to do a render uh, that would be either under Project, Render, um, or if you happen to have the other toolbar up, which I don't right now, <laughs> uh, you could do that. Um, but this is how you export things in Kden Live. Do the selected zone if that's what you have set up. Make sure you pick that. And we want to make sure that we're actually using the video with alpha. And the one that I found that works really good, at least in my conditions, I'm using Windows 10, uh, is the alpha MOV. All right. And what that does is that it actually exports uh, with the thing that you have chromed, uh, the thing that you've made transparent will stay transparent using this video with alpha export. That's really useful because then you can bring it back in as you've exported it. And I, that's what I'm going to show you over here, these clips on top, and you can use them. Now I've put some blur back into this. Uh, I mentioned I had to take it out <laughs> and then recreate it back in. I've put some glow back in and you can kind of see what this is doing that I've animated it over myself and I could actually manipulate these video within Caden Live. I, I can add some basic animation and keyframing to stay with me and track a little bit. So I have some control after the fact. I don't have to necessarily animate all that in the tool that I'm doing in Creator or, or Blender, as it were, depending on your preference. Um, I can use Caden Live to match the motion a little bit as long as the object that I'm animating around uh, remains the same. My head doesn't change shape really with any significance, even when I kind of turn my head so much. So that works out in this case. Um, but if you're going to do, say, a full body, then you may need to be a little bit more intentional about creating the effect in this way. So you could do that. And there's a little bit more you could do with the effect after, the, you know, while it's here, you can add some other visuals to it to make it a little more stunning. Again, this is proof of concept and a, and a little basic. Um, but that's really the premise is you apply it again just as a video with alpha now that we've done that work to create the effect to draw it out frame by frame and again uh, that's explained better in a previous video if, if i'm jumping along too fast that's why because we've already taken the time to explain that piece and now we're bringing it into Caden live to kind of draw out this effect and as i mentioned i could do a simple transform i could do a position and zoom uh, you can use this to manipulate how this effect is going to play out a little bit here uh, like I've done here, and you can, can kind of troll if I happen to move back and forth a little bit, if I happen to move in the frame, you could do that with simple keyframing. And um, I've done a lot of videos about how to use those controls. In fact, I'll point you to a playlist over there so you can get a good idea of how the interface works um, for Kaden Live as well, uh, but you can learn how to use effects. So uh, that's really kind of the whole basic premise. And I'm going to just do a quick run through here so you can kind of see. I put these in succession because it's a very quick test. But this is really what happens, and you can kind of see the suggested motion here. It's not too too special right now because I didn't take a lot of time, but it could be so much more. This is just the simple proof of concept to show you actually could create this kind of rotating effect around somebody just with some simple steps. So that's pretty cool and pretty fascinating. And the tools that I'm showing you here, by the way, and that I'm referencing, these are all free open source. They are completely free. The developers do this really just for the community effort to build quality tools, and uh, they're there for you to use. So I'd really suggest go get your copy of Krita. Go get your copy of Caden Live. I'll put some links in the description below so you can try this out. You risk nothing. You lose nothing. And they're very compatible with multiple OS versions. There's Windows. There is Linux. There is, I believe, Mac at this point. So really for all these tools, there's a good range of uh, compatibility and flexibility. So go try them out and uh, you lose nothing again. <laughs> so I do hope that's useful. And I thank you for spending some time with me just to, to see something new to learn about how a new visual effect and really the principle could be duplicated any number of ways. But this is just kind of centered around that Star Trek beam idea. I'm Nate. This is Phono Learningism. If this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up so I know this kind of content is useful to you. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already, and leave a comment 
ask a question, not just for me, but for the whole community. I love seeing it when you help each other because that means that we're experience building together. There's power in people, and I encourage you to take part in that. If you have answers and information, don't hesitate to jump into the conversation and be a part of the community. Thank you so much, and I will see you at the next video.